This is Faith in Action, the program that looks at how people put their faith into action in their everyday lives. Faith in Action is a production of Catholic Radio Indy. Now here's today's program. This is Faith in Action on Catholic Radio. I'm Jim Ganley. Our co-host is Bridget Ayer. Hello. Thanks for tuning in. And Bridget, we've been talking about Christmas shopping for a long time now. <laughs> yes, we have. If you haven't done it, uh, you probably ought to be doing it now. And uh, good luck with online shopping and getting it shipped and everything like that. But if you will be using uh, Amazon, um, you can help Catholic Radio out a little bit by going to Amazon Smile. Or actually, the easiest way is to go to our website, Catholic Radio Indy, Catholic Radio Indy. Dot org and over along the right hand side you'll see an Amazon Smile logo. If you go there and click, all you have to do is one time just tell Amazon that uh, whenever you shop, you want to make a donation. Not a, not your donation. They make a donation to Catholic Radio India. It's actually a small percentage of whatever you buy. They donate to Catholic Radio. It doesn't cost you anything. Doesn't cost us anything. Once you sign up, you never have to do it again. It's just a one-time thing, then you can totally forget about it. Whenever you shop on Amazon, Catholic Radio uh, gets a small percentage. And, of course, with uh, a lot of listeners, it adds up. So if you haven't done that yet, please consider it uh, catholicradioindy.org and then uh, Amazon Smile. And be sure to use all three words for the charity, Catholic Radio Indy. It's important you use all three words because if you just put Catholic Radio, who knows where your gift will go? And we wanted to go here, catholicradioindy.org. Yeah, I need to do some of my Christmas shopping, too. About time, Richard. Yeah, 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 I know. You got got that right. Well, as we head into the holiday season and family gatherings, people are experiencing grief and uh, tend to feel um, that grief a bit more in the holiday season. Um, So today, uh, we are very blessed to have our guest, Judy Phillips. She is a clinical pastoral counseling associate at Pastoral Solutions Institute, which is a Catholic mental health practice. And she's going to be joining us to tell us how to deal with grief in this upcoming holiday season. So Judy, welcome to Faith in Action. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Well, there has been a lot of different types of grief this year in the COVID world, I suppose. Um, Do you want to talk about, tell us maybe what grief is in general, kind of like a general definition of it? Yeah, actually, there's a really good definition that I have come across, and this is by actually a Catholic author, a Catholic blogger. Her name is... um, Jeannie Ewing, and uh, she, I thought, she really brought it together well. It's really, grief is the comprehensive physiological, spiritual, and emotional response that we have to any devastating loss in our lives. And a lot of times, I think that when we, most of us, think about grief, we think of it in relation to death or attending a funeral, those kinds of things, which is absolutely very true. But as this definition uh, helps us to see, it really goes beyond that. It's, it's really much bigger than, than only death. It, it's any devastating loss, essentially, that uh, we might experience in our lives. So that could be, you know, um, any kind of significant change, uh, you know, transition from... Uh, a certain time in life to another, like getting married. I know oftentimes people don't think about grief surrounding marriage because it is a happy time, but there can be grief with those those kinds of situations as well. That's really interesting, and I didn't really think about it in in those in that in those terms. I want to talk a little bit about your background and um, the work that you do at Pastoral Solutions Institute, so people can kind of have a a sense of where you're coming from as we talk about this. Mm-hmm. Well, as you introduced me and you said, I am a a clinical pastoral associate with the Pastoral Solutions Institute. Uh, It is a Catholic uh, telephone counseling service that is available for uh, people worldwide, essentially. Um, I work with Dr. Greg Popcheck, and he has the More to Life radio program, uh, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Yep, on this uh, channel, we carry that. Right, yes. Yeah, so uh, we are available to offer 
counseling services to individuals, couples, families uh, that that are struggling with, you know, the life events that they're encountering. And um, the beauty about the work that we do, that it, it, that it's all framed from a Catholic perspective, that it is through the lens of giving understanding and consideration to the way that God has created us and intends for us to be in relationship with Him and with others, and in taking that understanding in how we can then address and deal with the issues that arise in our lives, in relationships, the problems, kind of the way that we're thinking about ourselves, those kinds of things. I'm wondering, and I've heard, and maybe you have too, Jim, that there are different stages of grief, but that I also understand that people might experience grief in a different way. It's kind of unique to each person. Is that a fair statement or thought? It is true, and there are stages to grief. So I think first and foremost, I would say that um, I think generally it's agreed upon that there are about seven stages of grief. I think initially when Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross kind of identified stages of grief um, related to particularly a dying person, it was initially thought that there were only five, but over time there's been an awareness that there are more. So those seven stages are shock, denial, anger, guilt, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And I think it's important, as you said, Bridget, to recognize, yes, that whole um, grieving process is unique to each individual person. Um, I think it's important to help people understand also that even though there are those stages, a person may not go through every single one of them, and it's not a linear process. Uh, and uh, there isn't a timeline, so to speak, on on the grieving process. Uh, a person might, you know, experience uh, going through shock and denial, uh, but then they move into bargaining or something. So, and then it can kind of ebb and flow back and forth as well. That there can be a situation where you find yourself in a certain stage of grief. Uh, and then think that, okay, I've passed through that, but then find yourself back there at another point in time. That's not an uncommon thing that can happen. And I think kind of having a sense of that, first, there isn't any timeline, first, and there isn't any, I guess, normal grief, if you know what I mean, um, Mm -hmm. normal timeline, normal process. You you might go back to certain things, that that kind of helps people as they're working through grief to not have, to have better expectations of like, why is this taking so long? Why can't I seem to move on? It's maybe more forgiving of yourself of this. You know, why is this taking so long? I want, when I, when we put this show together, I was thinking when we talk about grief in the holidays, I think that's typically a people that you've lost, like grief due to death. So I want to talk about that. But then I also, before we get into that, I want to talk about some of these other griefs you know, whether, you know, you lost your sporting season or now I'm not going to school in person. I never see my friends, you know, all different ages. And I think maybe parents, people don't really realize what other people are going through. So maybe how can we recognize other people's suffering? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then how do we kind of meet people where they're at? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that's kind of a weird and tough and oblivious or uh, big question, but I, I know you can, no. I know you can handle it, Judy. <laughs> Thanks, Bridget. I appreciate your confidence <laughs> in me. Um, well, I would say, you know, first and foremost, how can we recognize other people's suffering? I think that it, it comes to be tuning into what seems to be unusual, you know, where it's, whether it's their you know, usually you have this young person maybe who is very easygoing and, and things like that, and then all of a sudden there's this edginess to them. Or maybe they're withdrawn and they're not engaging as much or something like that. I think it's going to be anything that seems to be kind of consistently and persistently different about the person that you know, where maybe it's, for example, um, you know, there's somebody that you speak to on the phone on a regular basis, like a, a, a family member, and 
you don't hear from them anymore. There's like not that consistency. Those are the kinds of things you're going to want to look for that help you know, ooh, something's going on here that I need to I need to check out and I need to pay attention to. And I think then, you know, the second question being, how do you sort of meet them where they are? Uh, I think that's a, a really important question. And one of the best things that we can do is to offer our presence to them. Um, obviously, we all know that we're in this time with the COVID pandemic. And so, you know, we go, well, how do we do that? Because sometimes we can't be physically present with them, which is true. But I think we, we see how can I extend myself to another person? How can I connect with them? Because God created us to be in relationship with him and with others. And that is at the core of us as human beings. And so we need to be uh, being creative during this unusual time for all of us to connect with other people. That's something that's really critically important. And then I think being meeting them where they are means I'm coming to this person and I'm 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 listening. I'm I'm just being able to hear and listen to what they're saying without judgment, without offering my perspective. There will be a time to offer some additional help, but initially I think it is about hearing about their experience, what they're experiencing, and um, being able to uh, just understand what it is that, that's happening for them, what, what they have lost, um, you know, what is difficult for them. Um, I think I know even for my own self, just with my uh, teenage son, that, you know, I have to keep reminding myself that, yes, this, especially COVID, right, is impacting me, so right, I'm experiencing some grief in some way as well, but also him, you know, even though he's 17, he still is a person, it, it's still affecting him. Life is very different for him and for all of us than what we knew previously. And that's one thing, I guess, with COVID that realizing, you know, you're, you're we're all kind of in that, it's still kind of like the shock of just how so much so much has changed and trying to figure everything out and then and then now I'm kind of like like you said you know we have we have sons that are friends and you know thinking wow like this this has got to be hard for them and it's finally right. you know, dawning on me well you know they, they have losses too you know right. so everybody's experienced loss in a different way at the same time right. and and you can get so caught up with what you've lost or your challenges of trying to figure out the internet or whatever you're trying to figure out that you can't um you're not recognizing everyone around you so i'm i'm guessing that's somewhat common <laughs> it is very common and and i think you know i think the other thing that um that sort of kind of brings to light, uh, that it brings to light is the fact that uh, there's so much happening so quickly. Yeah. Right? Even though, even back in March when things slowed down, like there's still so much happening that was unprecedented, right? People are working from home, they're having kids home, doing school, they're trying to do childcare and work themselves and, I mean, all of these things. And so we bring that forward still, even though we have kind of, you know, found our way forward nonetheless. There, there are still a lot of challenges that all of us face. We're in this time leading into Christmas, which is a difficult time. And, okay, how, how do I shop this year? And those kinds of things. But that, that we want to be able to try to be intentional in slowing ourselves down, to be able to acknowledge and be aware of our own experiences, our feelings. Therefore, we can be better able to recognize it in others and to be able to be present with them. And, and that can be so hard. I mean, I just think in our society today, it's a challenge. But, um, you know, I think it's, it's the beauty for us as, as Catholics in, in that prayer life that we have and in being able to go to Mass. Those things purposely help us to slow down. We need to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about grief in the holidays and how to navigate forward. So stay tuned for more Faith in Action. Catholic Radio Indy. Keep Jesus at the center of our day all day long by having those words in the background. It touches lives. It does every day. Welcome back to Faith in Action. I'm Bridget Ayer. Jim Ganley and I are sitting in the studio. We are socially distant, and we have our 
wonderful guest with us, Judy Phillips. She is a counselor. She is a clinical pastoral counseling associate with Pastoral Solutions Institute, a Catholic telemed mental health um, practice. And we're talking about tips for coping with grief. And we've kind of been talking about grief more in a general sense, but I want to talk specifically about tips of dealing with grief during the holidays when we're talking about the loss of a loved one. Um, how do we, uh, what tips do you offer, Judy, in, in terms of getting through the holidays or maybe enjoying the holidays or making them meaningful without them being, I don't know, as sad? Um, mm-hmm. and, then, and, and then the other question I have as it relates to that is how there's, there's all these other grief things that are happening because of COVID and are some of these, you know, transferable to that. So mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. maybe talk first about the loss of a loved one and tips for coping. Mm-hmm. You know, some people, so right. let me ask another question. Some people don't want to do things that they did with their loved ones because it's too painful, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then other people want to do certain things because it honors them. Right. Maybe right. there's not a right and wrong. Go ahead with your tips. Well, there isn't a right and wrong. I think the, the most important thing is, uh, I would say first and foremost, is, is know yourself, whether it's related to the loss of a loved one or other losses that people are experiencing. And by that, what I mean is kind of as I was talking before the break to say, you know, you have to be able to know first how you're feeling and then understand the cause of that feeling and to be able to explore that a little bit, you know, to be able to uh, sit with the emotion, you know. So for those who have lost a loved one, it's going to be important to take the time to acknowledge it. We are, we're not able to move on from grief until we uh, approach it and, and address it and go through it. Um, if we don't spend the time in it that, that's needed, then we get stuck and, and we feel like, We can't move on because we can't. We have to take that time. So, you know, as we experience feelings, it's our body's way of communicating to us that there's something we need to notice. I mean, that's the way God created us. That's an element of the theology of the body. So uh, it's important to notice that. So in the loss of a loved one, to be able to think about also the things about that person that you miss, that you appreciated about that person, uh, that you um, want to be able to carry forward, whether it's um, certain traits about that person that you wish to emulate as you go forward in your life, or whether it's certain things about them that, that you just want to celebrate, that you want to honor and acknowledge. And so sometimes for some people that is in a, uh, a very much out in the open way, but for other people it is simply taking the time to journal, to be quiet, to reflect, and to, uh, to to be with that loved one in that kind of a way. And, you know, those same kinds of practices are things that we can integrate regarding other losses that we're experiencing um, when it is, uh, you know, being able to acknowledge it, being able to uh, determine what it is that I'm missing, and to be able to think about, you know, uh, how do I want to be able to go forward? Um, that helps to give us some clarity. But but taking the time, first and foremost, is what is most important to know how you're feeling, what your needs are, and then being able to ensure that you can advocate for yourself what those needs are, whether it is um, that you're engaging in a certain way or maybe it is that you're being a little bit more uh, quiet and, and not, you know, doing certain things because it's, it's just too painful. Now, we've been talking so far about the person themselves that is experiencing the stress, and we've been talking about uh, professionals like yourself who can help them. What about everybody else in between that uh, family and friends I'm thinking about? How do they help someone who is experiencing mm-hmm. stress? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I think the biggest thing is um, being able to, as we were talking before, uh, be observant, be aware of what's happening with those around you, being able to ask questions, check in in a loving, supportive way, and um, 
you know, being able to be present with the person. Again, in this time of COVID, it may not be being physically present, but we have all kinds of wonderful technology that helps us to be able to connect. I know it's not the ideal way, but it does still allow us to be uh, present with one another, whether it's a phone call, whether it's uh, connecting via a video conference, whether it's writing a letter, um, whatever it might be, those are ways that we can connect with people. And that's really what's important that we're conveying to them, you're important and uh, I want to hear what's going on with you. Now, are there mistakes that people make when they're trying to console someone who might be going in stress? Are there things that people should avoid saying or doing that might actually make the situation worse? There are things, and and I would say that obviously it's not intentional. People are well-meaning, but Mm -hmm. if if people can avoid phrases like, well, you shouldn't feel that way, or, um, oh, you'll get over it, Um, you know, well, it's time to move on, or any kind of judgment, those kinds of statements, even though people are wanting to help and care, they, they send a message that can be very hurtful and actually cause a person to kind of withdraw. So we want to try to avoid, you know, making those kinds of statements. I say really the best thing is to be able to be present and listen and hear what it is the other person is experiencing. And so what would be some positive things you could say, like, Maybe what do you need? How can I help? Are, are those exactly. good ones more? Those, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, being able to you know, ask the other person, what is it that you need? Also, um, I want to support you. So, you know, what can I do to help you? And a lot of times the person may say, well, I don't know. And a lot of times then when that happens, you think, oh, well, they don't need anything. They're good. Or uh, I don't want to push them too much on this. And I say, no, just keep going back. You don't have to be hard on them, but keep going back in a gentle, loving way and asking, you know, uh, that question of them. Also, um, being able to acknowledge the emotion that you're hearing, that they're experiencing. Because a lot of times when we're in the midst of it, we ourselves can't even fully uh, conjure up the, the feeling that we're, the feelings that we're experiencing. And so uh, someone outside of us a lot of times can say, gosh, I, I really understand you're, you're having just a really hard time and you feel so sad. That is like, oh my gosh, it's like a revelation can be brought forth from that. I want to get into, um, we have about four minutes left, and I want to talk about grief from other things. And some of the things that you're talking about could be or are applicable to these other griefs. And I I keep going back to, to young people because I think people have really been so caught up with their own lives that they just fail to realize some of the real losses that young people have had of, of all ages, you know, to diminish, you know, someone's senior prom or their senior year, which, you know, they didn't get to have their senior year, maybe didn't get to do their senior pranks, you know, but I mean, these are big, I mean, big milestones um, in life that just got kind of swept away and, you know, everyone's dealing with maybe job loss or whatever and they just kind of minimize even though yes in in the, in the scope of life you know missing your senior prom it maybe isn't a big deal but at that person with that time in their life that's like a huge deal or you know I mean I'm just giving that as an example but there were other things you know end of year sporting things or or performances or whatever so talk about grief in general and maybe how some of these tips apply well, I think the biggest thing is going back to that definition. It's that that comprehensive physiological, emotional, spiritual, mental, devastating loss, and to be able to acknowledge that acknowledgement, as I said, is just so big. Um, I, I think that that um, we have to again, if we know ourselves, if we can be in touch ourselves with how we're feeling, and right, all of us have been trying to find our feet, so to speak, in the midst of all of this, but then we are able to uh, consider what's going on with other people. So being able to uh, just acknowledge our own experiences, but then to think about, you know, when I was that age, the things that were important to me, or when I was in this situation, these are the things that are important to me, 
and then um, being able to uh, help the person, just as we were talking before, to understand themselves what's happening, but also then to offer support, uh, help, understanding, whatever it is that we can do to connect and to try to to be supportive of them. We only have about two minutes left. Um, When should someone get professional help, and then what kind of resources would you offer? Mm -hmm. So um, I think the biggest thing is uh, a person should get professional help, reach out for some additional help, um, especially when they're noticing they're having difficulty or a loved one is noticing in another person they're having difficulty um, managing through day-to-day. Like life is just like daily life is difficult. Um, and then also if, if there's noticing of um, um, use dependence on like alcohol, drugs, any other kind of addictive thing, um, spending, um, uh, food, those kinds of things, as well as when a person seems to be experiencing like relentless guilt um, and then lastly, the other indicator would be if there are indications of um, self-harm or harm to others. Those are the indicators that, wow, we need to get some professional help. As far as resources, um, what I can offer is our website, which is www.catholiccounselors.com. If you go there, um, there are a couple of videos related to grief that offer some really good information. There are a variety of videos that talk about grief there, some due to child loss, those kinds of things. Um, but then there's also a blog spot, and I have this that I'll give you, Bridget, as a link, uh, a, a good um, uh, article written by one of my colleagues about the challenging times and understanding the grief related to our experience with the pandemic. But it, it also addresses just in general what we can do. And then there's one other uh, website that I'll share with you, but uh, it includes a, a Catholic guide to understanding grief. And really the beauty that our suffering is not in vain because of Christ's suffering, that we can use that for good. And, and I know we have to wrap up, but there's just the article is very good in helping us to understand that um, a little bit more in depth. Judy Phillips, uh, we're out of time. Thanks so much for being our guest, um, and we'll be in touch soon. And and, uh, Merry Christmas. You have been listening to Faith in Action, the program that looks at how people put their faith into action in their everyday lives. Faith in Action is a presentation of Catholic Radio Indy. You can hear this episode of Faith in Action again or any past episode at catholicradioindy.org. If you have a suggestion for a guest or topic for a future program, please call us at 317-870-8400 or email jim at catholicradioindy.org.